So welcome to Bagi Khana, Waspan. It's a pleasure to have you here. Same here. So could you tell us a bit about this car? What is it's the star of the Bogilal collection? Uh, it's a 1930 Mercedes Benz 540K Cabriolet B. So Cabriolet B is the body style. Uh, it's a two-door, four-seat convertible. Okay. It's been in the family since the past 50 years. Right. Bridges Chinai. The son-in-law has got it restored and it will be So awesome. when did she come to you for restoration uh, and what was exactly the condition? Exactly in February last year. We were fortunate everything was in place but uh, with age it had deteriorated. Right. And uh, we have renewed everything bumper to bumper including we wore all the engine and the transmission and all. So was this a, as they call it a ground up or an... Or yes, a, it was a ground up body of restoration. Body of restoration. Yes, body. So you took everything off and you did the mechanicals as well as the cosmetics. cosmetics. We had to do a lot of woodwork in the frame. Right. This body, uh, the skeleton of the body shell mm. is wood. Right. So you re... We, we take the skins off, redo the wood and put the skins back. Okay. And of course the chassis was, the body was then later on taken off, the chassis was sandblasted and mm. uh, everything was put back again. So this again, you know, is a very, very special car. So obviously, you know, when something like this comes to you, you also have to handle it yeah, at that level of respect. We feel privileged right. to be, you know, honoured to have worked on such cars. What What is the homework? There must be a lot of homework. There's lots of homework, have lots of homework. First of all, all the manuals mostly are in German. <laughs> so we use Google Translate many a times too. Right. And we were very fortunate to have an expert from Germany to help us a lot. And I would email him the question and he will answer me with pictures and with measurements. Okay, wow. So he was very, very kind and uh, so it gave us an added edge to finish it to that level. Right. But of course, we've done a lot of research. I mean, hundreds of pictures we've downloaded online and we zoom in and check to see the details. And how difficult would it be to get parts for a car like this? Because it is you extremely did manufacture difficult. We did stuff. manufacture a lot of stuff, but it is very difficult if you don't know the right people. Right. So, I mean, it took us like four months of hard searching and we just couldn't get it. Yeah. And one fine day we struck gold with this person, Rolf Wagner. Right. And he is the master for this car. And Anything like, I want a sun visor, and yes, I can give you one. I want a mirror. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you've been searching for? For yeah. like four months. Uh, <laughs> he was very kind. He was, he really, the edge, the crispness that we get is thanks to this person who helped us achieve this. And that's the thing, you know, I think everyone who's attached to a car like this is already very passionate. True. So for them, without passion, you can't yeah, achieve it. Yeah. So it's not a commercial thing. Correct. I feel money just follows good work. Yeah. So no, if you do it passionately with your heart and soul in it, it is, it will show. Yeah. And for you to turn this around in a year's time, yes. I must say it's quite, uh, quite. It was hard. the show which egged us on. Yeah. To finish yeah. it in time. Yeah. It finished like four days before the show. Wow. So that's the thing. That's the other question. You know, shows like this are so important in this. Very community. very. Because, because of these shows, if you see, this whole game started in 2008 with the first Cartier Concourse. Right. With that, if you see it in 2008 to 24, the restoration is steadily growing up. And the clients are spending money, they would want a world-class car, a world-class job. And we are upping our game. Yeah. And I'm sure all the foreign judges that come and they are amazed at the workmanship of our Indian craftsmen. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I had an instance when, in fact, they were judging my car, and they've also seen cars over here which have come from abroad and have been restored abroad. So they asked me a question that, was this restored in England? <laughs> I said, no, no, this is yes, done in India. So the car, I mean, for me, he's the benchmark. He, yeah. he sets the benchmark, we catch up, and we have healthy competition amongst us. This leads to the next level and I'm talking about the restores and following through a conversation I had with Mr. Goenka and some other people where you know the quality of the work now in India in my opinion has reached global standards certain right and uh, we are also price competitive and if you're able to streamline a few things within that I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to start getting cars from abroad for India yes there are some rules and regulations yeah. that one would have to work the on the right tip is a bit but I think, as Mr. Goenka said, if someone puts it correctly to the government and talks going back to the Make in India story and looking at it from the point of view that, you know, people working on these cars are like artisans. 
they are very much part of our automotive heritage. So we need to sort of support that as well. You know, so many foreigners do ask whether we will restore a car. But we have enough work in-house. Also. also. So also. I'm not enamored by the idea of getting cars from there because, see, I've always observed, we lack, you know, the final 10%. 90% we are there with them. That final 10%, if suppose something goes wrong, I can't reach out so far. Yeah, that's so understandable. That, uh, but, but yes, uh, we can uh, compete with them. Uh, our labor costs are way, way, way below them. But then again, uh, that is offset by the high import duties for the parts that we import. So you lose out on that. So right. it has to be balanced in some way. Yeah. No, therefore, there'll have to be a proper policy which gets placed yes, if what's coming Or maybe in an export-oriented zone or something like correct, that. Correct, correct. Because it would give a new lease of life by all, you know, to this we, we can generate a lot more jobs for everybody. Correct, correct. And uh, we have enough skilled workers in India. You will be surprised at the skill level we've got. Yeah. Uh, whenever the foreigners, when I see them that we've made this, though we think out of the box for them, it is repair by replacement. Yeah. We don't have a replacement, so you have to be innovative <laughs> yeah. and use your ingenuity and make something. Uh, quickly, Maraspan, if you can just highlight to us some of the key features about this car, the standout features, if you could the just... The standout features of this car, it's low slung with a long bonnet that gives it this graceful look. The thing I love the most on this car is the headlamps. Yeah. Those big two yeah. earrings sort of thing and the, yeah. and the prominent radiator. Right. It's a proper German car, correctly understated, it's not loud. What she like to drive? Quite powerful and very soft. I okay. mean, unlike the older cars, like this car is a bit harsh. Right. This this is independent suspension all around in uh, and very technologically advanced. Right. And plus it has this supercharger uh, which comes on. Can you uh, feel that? Not really, hmm. uh, but it does give a big sound. Okay. <laughs> And it is a dramatic effect right, right. when you start it and you hear the scream of the supercharger. Right. You were also mentioning the gears. That was also yes. Quite it is a unique gear system in this that the third and fourth gears on this car is like the Maybach. The Maybach had it on all gears. Right. So it's like a pre-selector thing. You pre-select the fourth gear hmm. once you are in third. Do not press the clutch. You pre-select it without pressing the clutch, and then leave the throttle, hmm. and it will pop into fourth gear. Okay. And when you want to uh, come back again, downshift, you pre-select the third and then you give the accelerator and it will pop into third gear. That's what they call an engaging drive. <laughs> <laughs> also the interior, I quite like the dash yes, with the, the mother of all it, it is, though very simple, hmm. it's, it's a very elegant dash. Yeah. Nothing over the board, so it's got a clock hmm. and all the dials are a, you know, a Bakelite sort of a white thing okay. which right. illuminates in the dark. And then... Uh, Must be looking lovely. Beautiful it looks yeah. in the night. Yeah. So we have this uh, ignition advance in the center, the horn ring is there. Mm -hmm. And if you see all the, all the steering and all the plastic yeah. actually, mm. including the handbrake knob or this vent knobs, everything, mm. are in uh, resin and in a white. They are not painted white, they are, you know. Okay, got it. Right. And very unique is the sun visor, if you see. Yeah. So you see through it. Yeah. So it's like a film. Uh, it's a uh, plastic sort of, yeah. uh, sort of thing. But very unique, I found it, you know, otherwise you can generally see through see a sun visor. Yeah. So it allows you to see through and at the yeah. same time. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. Wow. Quite smart. And how many of these would have been manufactured? I'm not sure on the numbers, but we have two 540Ks in India, both very early cars. Right. Yeah and uh, two 500 Ks. Great. Thank you so much. Welcome, sir. Lovely speaking to you. Thank you very much, Bye. Thank you. Bye.
afternoon Ishya. Hi, how are you? Good. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bagi Khana. Thank you, Pratap. So what's this speech that you've got here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she's a uh, 1969 Alfa Romeo 1750 GTV, something we bought 27 years ago. She's been in silver all along. I mean, she was red when I bought her, but um, she was in shambles. Okay. And in very, very poor shape. In, in, in to the extent that she was not drivable. Right. The engine fired up, but the suspension really? was... the All the area around to anchor that suspension was all corroded away. And she had to be towed to the garage uh, to start restoration. She's been in silver since the last 27 years and now, only now, she's freshly out in this you want, color. You wanted a change. I wanted a change. <laughs> I wanted a change. I was yeah. ready for that change. Yeah. So, and it's one of the... Um, uh, it's the correct colors. Yeah. 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 It's great. It looks nice and racy in this color. Actually. It does, you know? doesn't she? Really, really But nice. it's a kind of love you, love it, hate it kind of uh, thing. I love it. No. <laughs> it's, uh, it, for me, it works. For it sure. works. It works. I had to swing it with the family. Yeah, of course. So <laughs> my son is very, very attached to the car. So you, you see, the thing is that um, I didn't know that I was the 13th owner of the car. And obviously everybody had uh, used her, misused her and all of that. Right. And when finally I deciphered that she was an accident car hmm. and the head gasket kept popping like, you know, like an alarm clock. Every right. two and a half thousand kilometers, Not. it would go. Yeah. So it was then a decision we had to take whether we also wanted to palm her off or do it right and do it, you know, keep it. Yeah. And he was all of three years old at that time and he said, Dad, I don't want to see this car go. So then, you know, then it was the, the only thing to do then was to get her right. Correct. So we started the entire process of getting the chassis through and getting new heads and all of that and and this was 20 years ago. This was 20, 27 years. 20, so you you started that work 27 yeah, years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And who did you take her to for that? So initially when I started off, you know, funds were an issue. Right. And so I had a garage guy, a small time guy who just put her right. right. Couldn't do any of this correction work because you need skilled workers yeah. to do all of that. Yeah. That was a major job. Yeah, yeah. So we just put her on the road and then, then we were getting mechanicals done and stuff like that. And then finally, finally, I gave her to Jatin just now. Okay. And he sorted out a lot of problems. And some of which were known and some were just unknown to us. Yeah. So over the years, I've had a couple of oversprays yeah. done, you know, in silver itself, just to freshen her up, but never really done a, this time we sandblasted the car and the, the work. Right. You took the but whole thing apart? Engine was nice. Engine okay. after what I had done earlier, right. the engine was good. Gearbox we attended to because there was some slight slippage in the gears right. at times. But other than that, suspension and nothing else. Mechanically, she is sound, very sound. Yeah. We had uh, a lovely time in the, on the boot circuit. Oh, you've taken yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's what I like to hear. <laughs> time of my life on that. I, I have never had so much fun in my own car as yeah. I had in this car on the boot circuit. <laughs> we were actually pushing the lead car. Right. And that guy, I'm honking at him and that guy said, I said, get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun when that yeah, happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there was this one other gentleman in a must, fully modified Mustang. And I kept telling my wife, Lumna, I said, Lumna, if he comes, there's no race. If he comes, there's no race. And she said, but where is he? He's not there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and even in Bombay, you use her. I use her very regularly. See, that's, very regular. that's why you were able to do that. Because if you're using the car, yes. They appreciate yes. that yes. and then they're running so absolutely. much better. Absolutely, absolutely. And but what was fabulous was you're pushing her into the chicane and you know, the yeah. guy's saying, yeah, get, yeah. give me more, handling, give me more. Handling was that? Absolutely fabulous. Yeah. Typically, all that you hear and read about an Alfa Romeo is what I've actually experienced with, this, with this. the car. Right, yeah. yeah. That's the fun of it. I mean, they have that racing uh, heritage, heritage yeah. as well, right? Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. just the badge, you, you, you see yeah. that. It's, absolutely. It's amazing. Though for the show, I have I have a free flow exhaust, but I haven't fitted it. Right. Uh, so she sounds much more silent than I would like. You're going to change that, I hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go back. <laughs> because she runs. Yeah, you want to you want to get that sound with it. Yes. Yeah. Like I always tell my wife, an alpha has to be heard first and seen later. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Oh. Mm -hmm.
Jan. Sounds quite. She sounds quite nice, you know. Yeah, she does. She, she actually does. sounds nice. Yeah, but that one is so crisp. Right. You know. Yeah. I I like the sound of this. It's <laughs> lovely. But that's the thing about an alpha, no? Yeah. She will whatever it is, she will sound good. Very good. I love your hub caps as well. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. It's all original. That's mm. how they design them. So we have to go for some drives of back course, to Bombay. Of course, absolutely stunning. Thank you. So Thank congratulations. You. Thank Look you so much. Brilliant. And what did you think about the show? Did you enjoy yourself? I yeah? thoroughly enjoyed this show. I yeah. thoroughly. You will get to see some fabulous yeah. English talk yeah. cars. You know, really nice, really nice cars. It's I I, I don't envy the judges, <laughs> but it's it's a top. Call. Yeah, I did. I mean, I had a conversation with one of the judges in one of the classes, and they were saying that you know they yeah. all the cars were so good. Correct. That you know one would really have to sort of nitpick. Yeah, really, and it would uh, be difficult. You know, it really would be difficult. So it, it just shows you know the quality of work that's happening, right? It, it's gone, and yeah, and this event is going to further. Yes, absolutely, up, right? absolutely, yeah, which is great. So perfect. Enjoy the car. Thank you. Enjoy Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. on winning the overall Spirit of Excellence. So, thank you very much, Johan Punawala, with the Maharaja's Rolls Royce Silver Rake Drophead Coupe, the winner of the Mysore class. This was the first ever Maruti sold in India. This is an iconic bike that I'm sure many of you will recognize from your youth. And this was in fact Honda's first effectively homologation special that you could buy for normal road use. <laughs> The Dawson family, owners of this car, who have patiently commissioned its restoration. The Americans occasionally refer to it as a town car, where the front of the car opens up, the driver sits out in the elements, and the owner sits comfortably in the back whilst the poor chauffeur gets rained upon. This was the little sister of the 300 SL Gullwing and later Roadster. A car that was more affordable than the big six-cylinder car. What a great looking motorcycle. Once again, congratulations. Wow, what a weekend. Amazing cars, amazing atmosphere. I must thank Maharaja Barwani for organizing this event, Siddharaj, Arjun Oberoi, and the Oberoi Group for the Oberoi Concourse, the Elegance. It was absolutely spectacular. The cars were at a different level. The owners, the passion. I mean, it's been one of the best weekends I've ever had. And I hope you guys have enjoyed it too. Thank you.